Good morning and welcome to our Easter Sunday morning thought for today. But this morning we're going to be guided by Holy Spirit. And I sense in my heart it could be more of a short meditation incorporating some beautiful words from Jesus himself. Words that he channeled in a lovely book called Jesus Calling by Sarah Young. But first, on this glorious Easter day, having spent 40 days of self-denial, penance, prayer, whatever you have done for Lent, today is the day of experiencing the rebirthing of the Christ and resurrecting with him in spirit. So let us just relax. Kick off those shoes and allow your bare feet to touch the sacred earth. And as you relax, I want you to visualize coming here to our monastery garden and sitting under the cherry tree that's just now coming into bloom. And the time, it's not yet sunrise. Everywhere is dark, but you know it's the monastery garden because you can see a rather large statue of Francis with all the animals around him, just in front of you. And on the gate you'll see the name Monastery of St. Francis and you come in. And there under the cherry tree, by the waterfall, you see a bench discreetly hidden and you decide to sit there, facing east, to welcome Brother Sun. So just let us focus on our in-breath and our out-breath. And as we breathe in, we are breathing in the love of our Father Mother God, up through our feet from Mother Earth. And in our out-breath, we release to the resurrected Christ any fears, anxieties, troubles or concerns that we might have this new day and leave them with him. In our next in-breath, we use the most precious gift that God could give to any of us and that is the gift of free will to choose whether we wish to sit here and be here and to invite, invoke and call upon the Spirit of God or to do as many do today, and that's to walk away. And now just connect with the rhythm of your own breathing and all around you nature is relaxed. The dawn chorus hasn't yet dawned. And in the stillness of this moment, you are aware that today is no ordinary Sunday. Today is a day that commemorates a beautiful event that occurred over 2,000 years ago when the Christ who incarnated as Jesus and who suffered and who died lovingly for you and me, gave his life for our freedom. And on this very day, Easter Sunday, he arose, body and soul, to his Father, Mother, God. Relax now. Relax. And again, we visualize as we face east. We are near the tomb. In fact, we're in front of the tomb. And we are asleep. We've been dozing all night out of love for our beloved Lord. And we are the only one there, present, to pray in silence 
with our beloved Lord who gave everything for you and me. Suddenly, you hear a cock crowing. It disturbs you. And as you open your eyes, you can just see Brother Sun, his rays piercing the heavens and the skies. And it appears to be a beautiful morning. And the sunrise, golden rays of light piercing the sky. And as you gaze at Brother Sun, you hear what sounds like someone dragging a rather large stone. And as you look around, you're perplexed. And as you look to the tomb, the stone to the entrance of the tomb has been moved and yet no one was here. And you decide to go inside the tomb and there you see the clothes that Jesus was wrapped in, a beautiful white linen sheet, folded, but no Jesus. And fear overwhelms you that someone has taken your Lord and you were there and never seen a thing. But as you come through the entrance of the tomb, back out into the little hilly area in front of the cave, the sun has fully risen and the cock is still crowing and you are the only one there and you turn to the entrance of the tomb with your hands crossed over and your head sunk into your hands and you are weeping how could I be so foolish to be asleep when all this was happening And then you're aware of a fragrance, a fragrance you're familiar with. It is spikenard. You've smelt that before. And suddenly you realize it was what Magdalena used on the feet of Jesus to prepare him. to prepare him before burial. And you're aware that there's someone behind you and you're scared to look for fear of being injured or harmed. And you hear the voice, it is I. And you say, it is I and you recognize the voice, that soft dulcet tone, with so much reverence and respect in it, that you turn around and it is the Lord in his glorified state, looking nothing like he did on Good Friday, but looking translucent, radiant and at peace and you want to run to him and put your arms around him and he lifts his hand before you and says no I have not risen to my father mother God yet but let us just be still and let us acknowledge what is happening here? The angels rolled back the stone. He said, I was asleep. He said, you were meant to be asleep. And 
And here I am. I told my disciples I would rise on the third day. But maybe they were too shocked to take all this on board. That their Lord and teacher, their friend, their beloved, would do this. But he looks at you with such love. And his eyes are a piercing blue as your blue. And he says these words to you. I love you. And he shows you his hands. And these are the hands that were pierced out of love for you. Do you love me? He asks. Do you really, really love me? And he waits for your answer, knowing that you're surprised that the Lord Christ would ask you this. Do you love me? And you reply to him, Lord, you know I love you. You know, you know I love you. He said, let us sit on that stone there and let us reflect. Because today is an important day for me, yes, but for you. Because now that you have seen me, I want you to allow your heart arise from its own ashes of gloom and doom. I want you to sense the liberation, the peace and the joy. But first, I need to share with you a personal reflection for you to take from here and treasure your life with. I want you to experience the riches of your salvation, the joy of being loved constantly and perfectly. You make a habit and a practice of judging yourself based on how you look or behave or feel. If you like what you see in the mirror, you feel a bit more worthy of my love. When things are going smoothly and your performance seems adequate, you find it easier to believe you are my beloved child. And when you feel discouraged, you tend to look inward so you can correct whatever is wrong. Instead of trying to fix yourself, fix your gaze on me, the lover of your soul. Rather than using your energy to judge yourself, redirect it to praising me. Remember that I see you clothed in my righteousness, radiant in my perfect love. Keep walking with me along the path I have chosen for you. Your desire to live close to me is a delight to my heart. I could instantly grant you the spiritual riches you desire, but that is not my way for you. Together we will forge a pathway up the high mountain. The journey is arduous at times, and you are weak. Some day you will dance light-footed on the high peaks. But for now, your walk is often plodding and heavy. And all I require of you today is to take the next step clinging to my hand for direction 
for strength and for support. And though the path is difficult and the scenery dull at this moment, there are sparkling surprises just around the bend. Stay on the path I have selected for you. It is truly the path of life. And as you hear those words, you know, you know intuitively because they've been coded in your soul's DNA before you were born, that a day would come when having faltered and flogged yourself almost to death on trying to rescue others and to be loved and liked by others who disregarded you, who seen you as a joke or something under their shoe, and you had to meet the Christ today for him to look into your eyes and share with your heart the gateway to your soul, and your soul is the gateway to God, the gateway to Nirvana words that you need to take on board because they've been personalized from the heart of the risen cosmic Christ, the Son of God, the Incarnate One, your brother, your friend, your teacher, your mentor. And Jesus stands before you and he lifts his arms up to his Father, Mother, God and suddenly you look at his hands and there is radiant golden rays of healing light flowing from them to your heart. You are being cocooned in a golden ray of Christ's love. And the Archangel Michael is there with you to protect you and who places you now in a pyramid of light and God's protection. And Jesus' final words to your heart, you do know that all of this was for you and for every child of God, regardless of their religious labels, traditions, cultures, lifestyle choices, it was done out of love. And each one is given the opportunity to reflect as you are doing now and to choose which path, which path to follow for their highest good, where there is no duress, no duplicity, no party games or jokes, because this is a personal invitation from our beloved Father, Mother, God through Jesus. And he will ask you each morning, do you love me? Do you really love me? Or is it your ego that you love? Or the applaud from others? Or is it your indecisiveness where you need others to tell you what to do rather than make time to come into my presence like now and ask me, Lord, show me today how I may be of service to you. And as you open your eyes, you're no longer dreaming. You're back where you are in your own space 
And Jesus has not left you. He's left you a priceless gift. It's a piece of cloth. The cloth that represented the shroud that protected the sacred body of the Christ. And on that cloth, there's a small, tiny red stain, and it is the blood of Christ, shed out of love for you. And you hear his words again and again and again. I called you because you are mine. And I have loved you with an everlasting love because you are mine. So today, my dear brothers and sisters, when those dark days come and you're in a place of insecurity and disquiet, then know that nothing, nothing will ever harm you. But I will say it again and reiterate it over and over. Name the problem, bless it because it's yours, and immediately, without questioning it, listen to your heart, my voice, our Spirit of God, guiding you to share them with God immediately and leave them with God. And just keep saying thank you. Dust yourself down with my love. Take up your cross, whatever that cross is, and follow me. And I will give you each waking moment the strength to reclaim your divinity as my beloved. But I will only do it one day at a time. Try not to be like others who are impatient, who want everything done yesterday on their terms. And though I have called many to follow me, as happened at the foot of the cross, of the many thousands upon thousands that the Father Mother God touched through my hands, there were only three. Where were all the others? How fickle we are as humans. We cry, we plead, we storm heaven and enlist as many people as we can to pray for us. But when push comes to shove, when I look to my children to take on board the requests of others in prayer and bring them to me, where are they? They've dissipated because they've not built their foundation on my love. Their prayer life is a disaster. They only commune with me when there's a crisis. They rarely come to me and say thank you. I guess that's the new generation of disciples called the members of the Takers community. But I know you love me. So today, allow your heart and the Spirit of God within you arise. Arise. And Jesus whispers in your ear, we will meet again my beloved. A blessed Easter to you, my dear brothers and sisters. And remember, today is the day of our rebirthing. Let us take back our power from evil and negativity and fear and self-doubt and self-loathing. Let us take on board the mantle of Christ, the resurrected one. And let us not live in fear or doubt and question what God asks of us. Let us do it, but let us do it from love. 
a blessed Easter from our little monastery here in Northern England. We send you much love and thank you, Jesus, and thank you, Spirit of God, for speaking through my heart your words, whatever they were, I have no recollection now, but I thank you, Lord, and I wish you a blessed resurrection. <laughs>